Yesterday, um, or maybe the day before, I was so convinced that no one would come this morning that I was trying to make a plan B for if there were only six people here. And Wendy will back me up on that. But praise God, you're all here. And God has got here the people he would have here today. So before we start, let's pray. Lord, you are mighty and you are worthy and you are central to all our lives here at Christ Church. And Lord, we pray that you will speak to us now through your word and that you will continue to minister to us in your power through your Holy Spirit. In Jesus' name, amen. Before I start, I just want to really encourage you this morning. The theme of encouragement came up before the service and a sense that we really need to be encouraging one another as brothers and sisters in Christ. That we all need to appreciate who we are and who those are around us. And it's not necessarily about the big things we do. It might be the little things that make a difference to us and to other people. And I just want to encourage you in the, the Bible verse that is my absolute favorite in the whole Bible, and there are many of them, is Ephesians 2.10 that talks about us as being God's masterpiece created in Christ Jesus to complete the good works prepared for us in advance to do. And each one of you sitting here today is God's masterpiece. He didn't create rubbish and he didn't make any mistakes. Okay, so this may seem a strange theme, but it's a message that the Lord laid on my heart a few weeks ago now through a picture that he gave me, and it's of a jigsaw puzzle. And the picture has built over a period of time. Now, sometimes with pictures, and, and some of you may see pictures, you may have words of knowledge, that's not really important, but for me, when I get a sense of a picture, I don't see like a, a Kodak Polaroid fully color picture, fully formed. I get a sense of something that builds. And we'd been praying before the service, and I got the word jigsaw. I thought, that's a bit random. Okay, park that back there. And then through the service, I had uh, an image, if you like, that I was standing at the door there looking into this space. There were no chairs. It was completely clear. And on the floor was a huge jigsaw puzzle. It filled this space. And people were coming in. You know, we were coming in as we would to take our seats. And I know some of you have moved this morning, and that was the first radical thing we did this morning. But as people were coming in, they were kind of melting into this jigsaw puzzle and becoming pieces of the puzzle. I was like, Lord, what is this? This is a bit strange. What is this? And then I could see that the puzzle was a picture of Christchurch. And as people came in, the picture was building, very much like the picture um, out in the... Um, foyer at the bottom of the stairs if you've ever seen it it's a picture of the church but it's made up from many other different images and stuck together to make a picture of the church and that was what was building and this continued and we were all coming in and being formed as part of this puzzle now i don't know about you i don't know if anyone here has a love of jigsaw puzzles or has ever done a jigsaw puzzle but when I was younger, I used to be very methodical about how I'd do my jigsaw. I'd get the picture, because the picture had to be a nice picture, because you have to like the picture, don't you? And then you'd go through all the pieces and take the edges out. Yeah, I see some people nodding their heads. I'm glad it's not just me. And then, if it was like a landscape with a lot of sky, I'd put all the sky to one side, because that's the hard bit, isn't it? You think, oh, I'll leave that till the end. And then look for the bits that clearly fitted together. So if there was something that was really vivid in colour, you go, oh, if I find that, I can do that, and I can build on that. And then I'd end up with little pockets of, you know, the easy bits to be filled in with the difficult bits, if you like. 
And I was very methodical about that, and I would eventually finish the puzzle, and it would always be a piece of the sky that was the last bit, because it was always that bit I left till last. Now, my sister had a very different methodology for doing jigsaw. She would empty all the bits on the floor and start putting them together. And then if she couldn't make them fit, she'd just break the pieces off and make them fit. <laughs> That'll do. With me, it had to be... With her, it was like, that'll do. And we, you know, we both like jigsaws, but in very different ways. And I, I think that this image of this jigsaw was showing me that um, as we come in and we take our place and become part of the body, part of the church, I don't think it matters. It was a picture of Christ church. I think it represents the universal church, the body of Christ. It was just that image for me because that's where... God has placed me currently, I was aware that there was a gap in the middle. Okay, so there was a gap in the middle. So we've got a partially formed picture of Christ Church currently. And that made me think about the, uh, the passage in 1 Corinthians, and it's very familiar, and I'm just going to read some of it to you now. And it says, this is from 1 Corinthians 12, starting at verse 12. The body is a unit... Though it is made up of many parts, and though all its parts are many, they form one body. So it is with Christ. For we were all baptized by one spirit into one body, whether Jews or Greeks, slave or free, and we were all given one spirit to drink. Now, Jimmy said earlier about God forming water into everything. And what I have written here is that every living thing needs water to survive. On average, as human beings, we can live for three days without water. 72 hours. So if you don't drink from now... Bearing in mind, you probably haven't had a cup of tea since at least half past ten. By half past ten Wednesday morning, you'll be lucky to be here. That's how quick it is. Food is slightly different, but without water, very quickly, we die. <coughs> Has anyone here seen the film, the recent blockbuster of Les Miserables? Les Miserables, Les Mis, Les Mis, however you want to say it. Yeah? Hugh Jackman plays Jean Valjean in that. And in the opening scene, if you didn't know that was Hugh Jackman, you would argue it wasn't. And what he actually did was he fasted without water for a period of time. It was about 36 hours is quoted and he admitted to himself that he felt he might have pushed his body too far. That after 12 hours, he was getting very irritable. He was feeling faint. And if you watch that very first scene where he's in the water, he looks like a very, very old man. He's 44. If you get the chance, have a look. That's the effect of fasting, particularly without water. He lost about 10 pounds in two days. God turns water into everything. But Jesus gives us living water. You remember in John 4, where he meets the Samaritan woman, and he says to her, if you knew who it was who's asking you for a drink, you would be given living water. So just as we need H2O, water, to survive physically, we need the living spirit water within us to survive spiritually. Jesus is the key to the living water that keeps us alive into eternity. That's amazing, isn't it? Eternity. For some of us, getting to next week is a struggle. Thinking beyond Christmas is a struggle. And he gives us the key to the best party worship session ever, 
for all eternity. And we ain't seen nothing yet. Carrying on back in Corinthians. Now the body is not made up of one part, but of many. If the foot should say, because I'm not a hand, I do not belong to the body, it would not, be for, that, it would not for that reason cease to be part of the body. And if the ear should say, because I'm not an eye, I do not belong to the body, it would not be for that reason that it ceases to be part of the body. If the whole body were an eye, where would the sense of hearing be? If the whole body were an ear, where would the sense of smell be? But in fact, God has arranged the parts in the body, every one of them, just as he wanted them to be. If they were all one part, where would the body be? As it is, there are many parts, but one body. And it carries on further down. If one part suffers, every part suffers with it. If one part is honoured, every part rejoices with it. Now you are the body of Christ. And each one of you is a part of it. Each one of you is a part of it. And it goes on to talk about how God's appointed people with different giftings to be apostles, prophets, teachers, workers of miracles, having gifts of healing, able to help others, gifts of administration, speaking in tongues. But we're not all called to be one of those things. We're all called to be something different or a different cocktail or a different formation of the gifting that God has given us. But one thing is for sure, and we were talking about this in our house group on Tuesday, there is not a person on the planet who is not gifted in some way. God has gifted every person and created each person individually in his image and likeness. If I commit a crime and leave my fingerprint at the scene, I'll get caught because nobody on the planet has the same fingerprint as I do. That is quite incredible when you think that babies form their fingerprints very early in the womb, that that unique and identifiable mark created by God is unique to us. And I think that's an indicator to us of how precious we are to him, that he would take the time to make our fingerprints different. What difference does it make? I'm sure the police are very happy that they're different, but in our day-to-day life, it doesn't affect us. But we are so special that the smallest, 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 smallest detail is formed within the womb, and that's how precious we are to God. So when God created the universe, and Psalm 139 talks about how he knew us as he formed us in our mother's womb. He knew us way before that. We are part of the picture that God was building. We're part of his plan for this world. But our individual place in it is not the same as someone else's. John Donne wrote a poem where the phrase no man is an island is used. And just to expand slightly on that, he says, no man is an island entire of itself. Every man is a piece of the continent, a part of the main. So like the jigsaw puzzle, we all have our place and some of us feel more comfortable in that jigsaw than others and I'm aware of that and within the church you know we might look to people and think oh I wish I was doing that or why can't I do that or you know that we were talking the other day about people with huge ministries the Billy Grahams of this world the Mother Teresas of this world they were just ordinary people with gifts that they were willing to use for God but their impact 
is no less than the impact each one of us can have on another human being. To put it in a, a worldly context, if you like, I work in an office at Mission Direct. There aren't many of us, there are about 12. But who is it that I miss when they're not there? Is it the chief executive? Is it the directors, the managers? Do you know who I notice isn't there the quickest? It, it's the people that do the little things. And for me, it's a guy who work, has been working with us since July. His name's Sam. And he has come as an intern. And he's not paid. He travels from Bedford every day. And we pay his expenses to do that. He's taken a year out from university to get some experience. And every day at 3 o'clock, he brings me a cup of tea. He doesn't ask me, do I want one? He just brings it. He says nothing, puts it down, walks away. That's what I miss. And that's what I appreciate. And we need to take the time to say to those people, do you know what, when you do that for me, that means so much. Because to him, he's just making a cup of tea. What's the big deal? But for me, it shows that we have a relationship, that he knows that I like tea, and that he cares enough, particularly when I'm busy, to make sure I have a cup. And I heard the word cleaners mentioned as well. If a cleaner's missing from a building for a period of time, you soon notice it, but you may not notice them when they're cleaning it. So where do you fit, and where do I fit in this whole big picture? Who can we help? Who can we appreciate? Do we? I just want to thank God for every person here today. And some of you I know better than others. But I just want to appreciate you all today and say thank you for being you. And thank you for the input that you've had in my life. Because I think it's really important. Just as God is creating the body of Christ, each interaction we have with other human beings forms who we are. And if you think back over your life about who's had the biggest impact on you, it may not be the big evangelist. It might be the Sams. It might be a member of our family, our husband, our children. But there'll be other people along the way that will remember for that one thing they did. And in turn, there'll be people who remember you, who you may have forgotten, who you've impacted in the same way because you've been willing for God to use you in that way. And that's awesome, that you never know just what you're doing, who you're affecting. Anyway, back to our incomplete picture. So the parts of the puzzle are all there, apart from the centerpiece. And there's a, a hole, and it's flat. It's just a flat jigsaw puzzle at this point. And there's a hole in the middle. And I can see it's heart-shaped. There's a gap in the middle, and it's heart-shaped. And then, from behind me, Jesus walks in and takes his place in the center of that puzzle. And as he melts into his part, he doesn't just fill that bit in the middle. The light that comes fills all the gaps around the edges of everyone else. And the whole thing comes alive. It's like going from black and white to high-definition television in an instant, 3D. It becomes real. It becomes alive because Jesus is in it. Colossians 2 says... And forgive me, my formatting is gone, so the verses have been wiped, but it's somewhere near the beginning. I want you to know how much I'm struggling for you and those in Laodicea. And for all who have not met me personally, my purpose is that they may be encouraged in heart and united in love so that they may have the full 
riches of complete understanding. The full riches of complete understanding. Not some riches, not some understanding. The total, everything there is. In order that they may know the mystery of God, namely Christ, in whom are hidden all the treasures of wisdom and knowledge. I tell you this, so that no one may deceive you by fine-sounding arguments. For though I am absent from you in body, I am present with you in spirit and delight to see how orderly you are and how firm your faith in Christ. It goes on. So then, just as you received Christ Jesus as Lord, continue to live in him. In is such a little word. But in this context, it's huge. You've heard the phrase to be in the in crowd. We're members of the most elite in crowd there is to be a part of. We are in Christ. We're in. We're not excluded. We're in. Continue to live in him, rooted and built up in him, strengthened in the faith as you were taught, and overflowing with thankfulness. And we saw some of that this morning with the worship and praising God and acknowledging him for who he is. If we are in Christ, we overflow. The overflow of the heart is how the mouth speaks. We should overflow to others. It should be contagious. And then it says, for in Christ all the fullness of the deity lives in bodily form, and you have been given fullness in Christ, who is the head over every power and authority. So when Jesus comes and takes his place in our own lives, in the life of the church, he completes us. He's the bit that completes the puzzle. And for some of us who feel like we've had the corners broken off and we've been shoved into a hole where we don't quite fit, he's there to smooth the edges or to move you to the place where you do fit. He doesn't want us to feel awkward. He wants us to have life in all its fullness. He wants to be the bit that completes us. He wants to be the center of all that we do. And then at the end of this image of the puzzle, people get back up and become themselves again, but this time as lights going back out into the world. And Michael Campbell spoke to us the week after this picture had started, um, and nobody was aware of it, talking about we should be lights that go and shine in dark places. So we come in in our human forms, we're part of the body, Jesus completes the puzzle, joins us together. His Holy Spirit unites us together with him and the Father, the Trinity that we've had reference to this morning. All come together, and we then go out to reflect Jesus to a hurting world. And that doesn't have to be preaching to thousands of people. It has to be saying, great to see you. How are you? Here's a cup of tea. It's that simple. And people will know that you care. And people should know that we are in Christ. They should encounter a bit of Jesus through us without us even having to say anything. They should see the light of Christ in us, reflected through us making a difference. 
We all have a place, but we need each other. If I'm isolated outside, I feel excluded from the body. The same as if you separate all the pieces of a jigsaw puzzle. A piece on its own isn't much good unless it's with the rest of the puzzle. We're not like when you put together a flat pack from Ikea and you've got all those bits left over because you don't quite know where they go. We don't want to be the Ikea part, surplus to requirements. We want to be firmly rooted in Christ, in our place, in the body, however that is, doing what God's called us to do as us, not trying to be someone else, because that doesn't work but just genuinely being ourselves as he's created us with our giftings, with our flaws and our quirkiness. But that's what makes us special. That's what makes us individual. We all need Jesus to complete us. Allow Jesus to be the perfect fit in your life. Don't try and just let him into a little bit. It's the same as biting the corners off the pieces. He has to have an open vessel to work through us. And the more open we are, the more he can fill us and the greater the overflow will be. So we've come into church today as individuals. We've collectively become the body. Jesus has come by his spirit into each one of us It was tangible this morning. We could feel it. So when we leave here today, let's be different. Let's be those lights that shine in the world. And so that you remember, I've got a little present for everyone. Surprisingly, it's a bit of a jigsaw puzzle. Funny story about this jigsaw puzzle. Firstly, I picked the most religious picture I could find. (laughs) And then when I opened the box, and this is God's sense of humor, this is how I know when I'm on the right track. Whoever owned it before me had taken out all the edges. (laughs) Of all the, oops, all the jigsaw puzzles in the world that I could have picked from the charity shop, I picked the one where somebody has already taken the edges out. That is no word of a lie. I opened it this morning. It was sellotaped up. I don't know if there are a 1,000 pieces in here. (laughs) I haven't counted them. But I suspect if someone goes to this amount of trouble for a jigsaw they're giving to a charity shop, then there probably are. But I'd like to invite you all, um, perhaps we can split them into two boxes here, just to take a piece because it represents a number of things. And it may be different for you, and you may want to write something on the back of it. You may want to take a handful. You might want to keep it in your Bible. You might want to give one away. But where do you fit in the body of Christ? Firstly, you are an integral part. You are important. There is nothing more frustrating than doing a jigsaw puzzle, and there are only 998 pieces. Even if the two missing ones are the sky. It's all important. It's incomplete without every piece. And let Jesus fill the gap. Let him be the bit that fills the voids. We can try and fill it with all sorts of other stuff. You know, I need a new this. I need a new that. It'll be better if I upgrade my laptop, my car, my phone, my wardrobe, whatever that is. And you go out and you buy those things and then five minutes later you think... Well, that didn't really fill it, did it? But Jesus does. And he will, if you let him. So I'm going to, um, perhaps, Jimmy, you could take those that way. Just invite people to take some of those, and perhaps we can start over here as well. There are plenty of pieces to go around, don't worry. Um, <coughs> Yeah, so just perhaps when you look at that jigsaw piece, if you put it in your Bible, you pin it up on a a board at home, you stick it to a mirror. If you have issues with who you are 
and how you see yourself, know that this piece of jigsaw represents the fact that you are God's masterpiece, that you are important enough to him that he created you individually with a unique fingerprint. And don't let anyone tell you any different. When we've um, finished dishing out the uh, pieces of jigsaw, and if you want more at the end, that's fine, um, I'm going to invite Andrew to come back. We'll have another song. And if you're feeling that you would really like to receive some prayer ministry today, that you don't know where you fit, that you need healing, or just, I really feel like I'd like some ministry, then come forward. And we'll pray with you. We'll pray for those gaps to be filled. We'll pray for God to affirm you. And we will also take the collection. Thank you, Steve. So remember, you are God's masterpiece. You're not a mistake. And you are part of the bigger picture. To leave this place transformed in his image and likeness.